Well, as you just heard, hateful attacks in the pro-life movement are now normal. We just heard about what happened in downtown Philadelphia with Pennsylvania Representative Brian Sims. Here's part of it. Hi, everyone. Uh, Representative Brian Sims here, and I am outside the Planned Parenthood. A bunch of pseudo-Christian protesters who've been out here shaming young girls for being here. Hi. And so here's the deal. I've got $100 to anybody who will identify any of these three. So we're going to donate to Planned Parenthood. I'm going to donate to Planned Parenthood. So look, a bunch of war. white people standing out in front of a Planned Parenthood I I shaming I'm people. Really There's nothing Christian about what you're doing. I well, today, pro-life activists held a large-scale rally outside that same Planned Parenthood in Philadelphia in response to Sims's behavior. Abby Johnson is a former Planned Parenthood clinic director, now a pro-life activist. Her story was told in the recent film Unplanned. Abby Johnson joins us. Abby, thanks very much for coming on. So is it of course. our imagination or is the reaction to anti-abortion activism, including prayer, turning violent? It is. It's becoming increasingly violent. And I think one of the reasons is because people in their own party, the Democratic Party, are not willing to come out and, uh, and talk about this behavior, condemn this behavior. Uh, nobody from the National Organization for Women, who are supposed to stand up for women, nobody's coming out and condemning this behavior. Uh, and so it just sort of goes unchecked, and it goes unnoticed and without consequences. And you know, I, I'm here to say, along with a thousand other pro-lifers who were there today, to say, this is enough. We've had enough. We're not going to be bullied. We're not going to be harassed. We're out there. This is within our First Amendment right to do so. What do you think is I mean, what do you think is driving this? These are people who are arguing for abortion, in some cases, post-viability, late-term abortion. Not only are they not ashamed of that position, but they want to hurt anyone who disagrees. Why do you think, where does that come from? That impulse? Well, so I think it's a couple things. I think right now, uh, abortion supporters are, they're feeling the heat, they're feeling the pressure. We've got these heartbeat bills being signed all across the country. Uh, we have pro life measures taking place in, in many, many different states. I think that now we have a Supreme Court that's being set up to overturn Roe v. Wade. So I think in, in some ways, it's a response. To, to the sort of impending doom that they feel that Roe might one day actually be overturned. Um, but I think also, you know, we've got over 60 million abortions on the books recorded since Roe was passed in 1973. And, you know, we're, we're dealing with a group of people who are very wounded. They're very hurt. Yeah. And they need to really justify their own actions. And, and a lot of times that hurt comes across as anger, and they just don't see the difference. I think that's exactly right. When, when you know you're wrong, that's when you're the maddest. That's how I am. I think mm -hmm. that's how most people are. It's, it's sad. Abby, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you.